Hey y'all, Moses here. This video is about winning, but first I want to get some things out of the way. This video isn't going to cover everything that does or can happen in a round. PUBG is an incredibly situational game and at the core of every round is a series of decisions. Those decisions might lead you to victory or they might lead you to defeat. I cannot anticipate every decision and thusly I cannot anticipate how every round might play out. Nobody can. There is no secret to winning. There is no step-by-step -step guide. The path to improvement is paved with potentially hundreds of rounds where you don't win or even come close. The other thing I'd like to point out is that I'm a content creator, not a professional gamer. I make mistakes frequently and I'm certainly not the best player. Personal playstyle dictates performance in rounds, and while I tend to play on the aggressive side of the scale, your playstyle might differ from that, and that's okay. So what am I here to discuss? In this video we are going to review several of my winning rounds and I'm going to form examples around three core topics. Positioning, action, and tactics. Again, let me remind you, there are going to be aspects that you might not agree with and I encourage you to voice your advice in the comments because I've learned a great deal from you guys over the past few months. I hope that you find something interesting here or that I can help you learn something. Ultimately, this video serves to guide people through one of the most stressful parts of the game. This video is about winning. The first thing I'd like to talk about here is setting up for the end game. It is important to recognize that at some point during the game, typically around the top 10, it becomes extremely dangerous to loot bodies of kills due to proximity of other players. Of course, there will be some instances where looting is perfectly safe, but looting is the most vulnerable state you can put yourself in. Situations vary greatly, but typically you want to enter the top 10 with at least two fights worth of medical kits and boosters, and enough ammunition to kill all remaining players. It's important to realize that depending on your proficiency, enough ammo could be 80 rounds or 200. Just don't spend too much time worrying about gear and putting yourself in dangerous or desperate situations to loot. This footage is a great example of when the final circle puts you in a complex area with little visual aids for enemies due to all the areas that they can hide. In this situation we are near the ruins near the middle of the map and I have a disadvantageous position with little to no cover. I have to rely on audio information and constantly scan around me to survive. Yeah we're in now. red above me. I just hope he doesn't see me. Doesn't sound like he does. Do I crouch and look up? This guy's got high ground and everything. I can't. I don't want to crouch and look up until the circle's done moving. So now he's going to know I'm below him. I had to take that guy out. He's going to be able to see me down from up there. I just want to see if I can be able to peek him. Okay, I don't know if he knows where I am, but I'm going to boost one last time because we can't loot, so. There's going to be a guy likely ahead of me, and I know where the second guy is, so. Let's just pray we can keep it together. Alright, here we go. Really not sure where he is. Stop at the rock, please. Stop! Uh. 
Oh, he's only got a shotgun. This is a lucky stroke for me here. This player has given me knowledge that he is woefully undergeared for this stage in the game. All I need to do here is take the hill cover. Sides of hills are excellent cover due to the visibility, mobility, and cover they provide. All I need to do is wait for the play zone to advance, keep my distance, and wait him out. Unfortunately, I didn't have any grenades here. So there's the final circle. He's got to move. Or the play zone kills him, so it's, it's really up to him. Yeah, he's going around. Yeah, the play zone is going to either kill him. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Positioning in the late game is of extreme importance. However, positioning is not just running to a spot and staying there. Positioning is taking into account as many variables as possible to your knowledge. Putting yourself in a place that is both safe and gives you good visibility is the best option. Things to consider are directions of travel for enemies, hiding spots which may be dangerous, and any obstacles to your next location. Positioning is not just about where you are now, but where you need to be next. Good positioning can win you a game without any effort, and bad positioning may end in a circle killing you, or a well-positioned enemy eating your lunch. Fuck, he's around here somewhere, I just don't know where. Right there. In this example, I have cleared out my immediate area, but the play zone is still dangerous. There is clearly a player in the shack, but I've positioned myself to be able to watch the exit and his vehicle. However, I am receiving pressure from the houses to my left, and a few players are still unaccounted for. I have to play at the position here, as moving any further would likely mean certain death. The player in the shack has positioned himself poorly, and must make a run for his vehicle. Vehicles and houses can be powerful forms of cover, but the circle will pressure him to having to drive away, or die. Exiting a vehicle can be just as dangerous as you're effectively defenseless. In this case, positioning wins the game for me. Good, they need to fight each other. Got no armor. No armor now. Yeah, I was gonna say there's two right there. I'm gonna steal this kill. Play zone might win this for me. Is he stuck in the house? Like, where is he? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Realistically, there are going to be many times in the end game where you must simply kill your way to victory. This is where your basic aiming and gunfighting skills come into play. Decisive action is an absolute requirement in the late game. There is not much advice I can offer you here, as this topic is directly related to your personal skill. However, one of the most frequent questions I get asked is how to get over the hump in the late game. I reviewed footage uh, of some players that have been provided to me, and often the one thing I see is a lack of action due to either fear or perceived lack of skill. Skill can only be gained by practice and experience, however fear is something else entirely. I cannot give you anything other than wisdom I have gained from others. When in the late game, it is important to focus on your breathing and to keep your mind clear. Take information as it comes, and when given the opportunity to act, take it. At the end of the day, there are many ways to victory, but you have a gun in your hands, so you might as well use it. There is only so far you can get by hiding and playing passively. Be brave, young man. 
there is victory ahead. Dude, better not have just stole my kill. Woohoo! Woo! When it comes to tactics, there are a few tips that can apply to the game in general. The first is to take note of where players are looking, aiming, or moving. Allow other players' actions to feed you information, and don't be too quick to engage. I have had great success following players who are not aware of what is behind them and allowing them to spot other enemies for me. The same goes with engagements. It is better to clean up after one player after a fight than to interject and have two players potentially engaging you. Also, it is important to recognize behavior that can give you a tactical advantage. In 1v1 scenarios, players can overthink and act desperately. Look for players throwing wild grenades in an attempt to lure you, and if the grenades are obviously missing you, it would be wise to assume that they don't know where you are. This might seem like common sense, but recognizing this behavior is important to honing your game sense and winning more 1v1s. Speaking of grenades, it is important to have an ample supply going into the late game. Even if you don't have frag grenades, throwing smokes at an enemy can force them out of cover due to fear and can net you an easy kill. I hope you found what I covered here useful. If there is any one piece of advice I can leave you with, it is to treat each round individually and don't let bad rounds carry over to the next. Every round is a learning experience if you allow it to be. I've lost a few 1v1s and I've died plenty of times inside the top 5. Ultimately, these experiences make winning all the sweeter when you clean up your mistakes and push forward. Try and maintain a positive outlook and don't sell yourself short. It may take some time, but there is always a win in your future if you keep at it. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been coming into the live streams on Twitch at twitch.tv slash WTFMoses and on the YouTube live streams. Um, when they come in and say thank you for the videos and everything, that really makes my day. So thanks everyone for your uh, likes and subscribes and all that stuff. And of course, if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more like this in the future. Uh, we're closing in on 10,000 YouTube subs, and that's a really, really big deal to me. So, again, thank you, everyone, for your support. And I'm going to leave you with a little bit more footage. And, uh, again, you can follow me on Twitter, WTF Moses, all the social media. Um, thanks for taking the time, everybody. And uh, until next time, I'll see you out there. I'm just wondering how this guy's going to be positioned. I get around here? No, I gotta go round and right, looks like. I've got a little bit of cover. Yeah, I'm gonna move up here. Don't shoot me, friend. Oh, this is actually better. I'm okay with this. Oh, he ran him over with a vehicle. Maxi killed him, and the guy ran him over. Rip that guy. Oh, that sucks. What a pain in the dick for that guy. Oh, he died outside the play zone. So it's me and this guy, then. And he has likely no idea where I am. I have no idea where he is either, to be fair. I'm imagining rocks. Like, he wouldn't have been with Maxi. He's probably going to be in, like, one of these little ridge areas. Oh, yeah, I see him over there. 
I see him over there. 